Okay, this is the P3 paper from October 2021. We're going to be looking at question number one here. And question number one is an algebraic methods question. We're going to be doing some work on algebraic fractions to simplify fx down. We're going to be doing some work on functions and graphs because we need to find the inverse function. And finally, we're going to finish off with some differentiation and I think we're going to be differentiating a quotient when we get that far. Uh, lots of different bits to this question, so let's make a start. Part A says, can I show that fx, which is equal to 5x over this quadratic here, x squared plus 7x plus 12, plus 5x all over x plus 4, x is greater than 0, uh, can we make that into a single fraction there? So if we are, what I would absolutely expect is to be able to factorise this quadratic, and even more than that, when I factorise it, I'd expect for one of the factors to be x plus 4 here, and then it should simplify down quite nicely. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, it does. It factorises to x plus 3, x plus 4. And we've got 5x over x plus 4 here. So in order to combine these two fractions, I need them to both have the same denominator here. And in order to get that, if I do what I've just shown you there, multiply top and bottom by uh, x plus 3 over x plus 3, then that'll work out. I'm going to do that on a separate line, simply because I'm doing a proof here. So I want to show all my steps. So this bit doesn't change, but x plus 3, x plus 4, but this bit now is 5x, x plus 3 over x plus 4, x plus 3. And because these are now the same denominator, turn it into one fraction there, x plus 3, x plus 4 is the denominator, and I'm going to get 5x, and if we multiply out that bracket, 5x squared plus, what's that, 15x. So that gives me, uh, what have we have got there, 5x squared and 20x all over x plus 3, x plus 4. And you might think to leave that as the answer, except they have shown, told me to show it's equal to something. Uh, and what we what you might be missing is the fact that on the top here, look, we can actually factorise and take 5x out of that. So if you do that and take 5x out, we're left with x plus 4, and then that's quite handy, because the x plus 4s will cancel there, and we get left with what we were trying to show, 5x all over x plus 3. So part A... Done. Part B says, can we find the inverse of the function? Yeah, and I'm going to try and use um, what I've just found to work out the inverse of the function. Let's do it here. B, um, my function, I'll use the alternative version. Oops. That I've just found, which is x plus 3 here. Remember, x greater than 0. That's going to have an impact now. On my function there then, let's just talk about that quickly, they've told me the domain. So if they've told me the domain, when I work out the inverse, I really should put the domain on there as well. So let's make sure we don't forget that and take a little bit of work to do that at the end of this bit. In order to find the inverse, so that's nice and easy. Hopefully you've practiced doing these. We just set y equal to the function and then we just rearrange to make x the subject here. So multiply that up there, whoops, and I'm going to have y times x plus 3 equals 5x, which is yx plus 3x equals 5x, and as I said, get all the x's onto one side, whoops, yx plus 3y, let's concentrate, sorry, yx plus 3y is equal to 5x, uh, yeah, get all the x's onto one side, leave the y's on the other. So 3y is 5x minus yx there. Take x as a factor out here. 
So 3y is equal to x5 minus y here. So x is going to be 3y over 5 minus y. And we didn't mention y's in our thing, so in our original question. So that's the function. And now I do need to do a little bit of work on working out what the domain is going to be. Right, so we use the idea that the domain of f to the minus 1x is just equal to the range of fx. Oops. Hopefully you know that because I can find the range of fx relatively quickly. fx was equal to 5x over x plus 3. Remember where x was greater than 0 as well as my domain for this function. So if I now want to find the range of fx, what I need to do is to sketch it. If I'm going to sketch this reciprocal function, a good thing to do, I always do them in the same sort of ways, is the first thing I do is work out the two asymptotes. The yes, x asymptote is easy because the x asymptote is just sticking that equals zero. We can't divide by zeros, can we? So um, x equals minus three would give me an asymptote. When I'm working out the y asymptote, I always do a really sneaky, quick little way for doing this. Remember, this isn't worth loads of marks, so we want to do this as quickly as possible. In order to get the y asymptote, what I do is I just set x equal to infinity. And if I set x equal to infinity, I end up with 5 infinity over infinity plus 3. You might say, well, that doesn't help. But it does, because infinity plus 3 is still infinity. So actually, we get 5 infinity over infinity here, which then gives me 5. So I've got my x asymptote and my y asymptote there. If I can find where it hits the axes, and that's nice and easy, if I do f0, put x equals 0 in, I get 0 over 3, I get 0 here. Then in terms of, remember, I only want the, a quick sketch of this for the range of this function. I've got that it's got an asymptote at x equals minus 3. It's got an asymptote at y equals 5. Okay, y, x. And because I know that it's going through the origin, going through 0, 0, the only possibility for my curve then is that it's doing that and doing that. Now, remembering where this is really, really important now, right, right way back at the start here, that x is greater than naught means that the range of my function here is just in there. So the range of my function is from naught up to 5. That, oops, sorry, x is from naught up to 5 there. The range of the function being the domain of this one. So actually, sorry, if I'm being strictly accurate, y is that. But going back to my actual question here, then x is being between 5 and 0 here. So this part is actually my answer for the inverse function. How much of this you want to show is entirely up to you. I obviously need to explain it to you guys, so that's why there's a lot of working out there. You might want to do that separately and not include it, but the actual answer then for the inverse, including the domain, is that bit there. You don't, you don't want to lose that mark, and they'll take that mark off you if you don't include it. So um, on to part C. So what's part C say? Part C says, uh, find in its simplest form f dash x, and then state whether this is increasing or decreasing. Okay, well, let, let's find f dash x first of all. Long question this for a starter, but hopefully relatively okay individual parts to it. So fx we've got is 5x over x plus 3. I'm going to treat this as being a quotient. So I'm going to say u is 5x. 
and V is X plus 3. DU by DX then is nice and simple, is 5. DV by DX is even simpler, it's 1. Uh, F dash X, or DY by DX, is equal to V DU by DX minus U DV by DX all over V squared. Okay, putting everything in there then, V DU DX is those two, 5X plus 3 minus U DV DX is the other two, there's those two there, 5x times 1, all over v squared, all over x plus 3 squared here. Okay, simplifying the numerator, I've got 5x plus 15 minus 5x, all over x plus 3 squared, which is then going to give me 15 over x plus 3 squared. And again, when I get a nice neat answer like that, I'm always pretty confident that I haven't made any mistakes with that. So that's f dash x. And then what was the other bit? It said something about uh, increasing and decreasing functions, didn't it? Hence, state whether the, it's increasing or decreasing. So this is just you making sure you've, you've revised the whole of your syllabus. Increasing functions are where f dash x is always positive, decreasing functions is where f dash x is always negative. In this one, since f dash x is always positive, has to be, doesn't it? We're doing 15 divided by something squared uh, and x greater than 0. So since f dash x is always positive, therefore it is an increasing function. Okay, hopefully all of that makes sense. That's quite a long question, especially with all my descriptions in there. But hopefully you found that useful and that it makes sense.